you're working You never stop, never stop working You never stop, never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working The reading today is taken from Mark 13, verses 32 to 37, and if anyone wants to follow, it's from the NIV version. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes back suddenly, do not let him find you as asleep. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Thank you. Father, we just thank you for Paul and for his family. We thank you for his devotion to you and his devotion to this church. And I pray now, Lord, that you will bless his preparation and you will speak through him to us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Thanks, Steve. I thought Steve was going to go on for hours, so I've only uh, prepared a very short talk, so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, keep watch, be alert. The church needs alerts. So, I'm just going to try and make you think today, okay? So, because it, it, it's so easy, isn't it, to go through life without thinking. You know, I find it very easy. To, and, uh, <laughs> but, you know, you can have the radio on, can't you, or the TV on all the time, or something going on, and it stops you really thinking, I think. <laughs> so, so, I'm just going to try and stir you up to make you think. I'll put my glasses on. Just going to start off, as it's all about war today, <laughs> I'm just going to read you something. A new recruit went into training at Paris Island, hoping to become a Marine. He was one of those young men who seemed to be a bit out of step with the norm and he easily became the subject of ridicule for those who enjoyed picking on offbeat people. In the particular barracks to which this young Marine was assigned, there was an extremely high level of meanness. 
The other young men did everything they could to make a joke of the new recruit and to humiliate him. One day someone came up with a bright idea that could scare the daylights out of this young marine by dropping a disarmed hand grenade onto the floor and pretending it was about to go off. Everyone else knew about this and they were all ready to get a big laugh. The hand grenade was thrown into the middle of the floor and the warning yelled, it's a live grenade, it's a live grenade, get out, it's going to explode. They fully expected the young man would get historical and perhaps jump out of a window. Instead, the young marine fell on the grenade, hugged it to his stomach and yelled to the other men in the barracks, run for your lives or you'll be killed. The other marines froze in silence and shame. They realised that the one they had scorned was the one ready to lay down his life for them. It's also too easy, isn't it, to judge someone uh, by what we see and we may not understand the person. And, uh, but we don't really know what people are like until the chips are down, do we? And we're in a tough place. Now, I said yesterday at the AGM that uh, my dad often used to say phrases, and I remember so many of them. Uh, and I don't know why this is, whether everyone's like that, but uh, one of his phrases was, um, it's better to be a living coward than a dead hero. Now, I don't know what you think of that. <laughs> it was quite controversial, some of the things he used to say. But better to be a living coward than a dead hero. Now, I sort of lean towards that a bit, you know, living coward rather than a dead hero. Um, and it reminded me of a song by Paper Lace. Do you remember it? Anyone remember what it was? It was also sung by Bo Donaldson and the Haywoods. Billy, don't be a hero. Yeah, do you want to sing it for us, Steve? No. no. <laughs> uh, I'll probably actually <laughs> yeah. It was uh, number one in 1974, it was. it was. Billy, don't be a hero. Don't be a fool with your life. Billy, don't be a hero. Come back and make me a wife. Uh, that was obviously sung by a lady. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. Uh, yeah. Um, now, at the moment, there's about, I don't know if you know, 150 armed conflicts going on around the world. Uh, any one time, there's usually about 150 conflicts going on. Uh, it, there was a film, I believe, called Oh, What a Lovely War. I don't, I've no idea what it's about. I've never seen it. But uh, there is nothing lovely about a war, is there? There's no such thing. I heard today on the radio, I don't know whether others heard it, that uh, in October, Russia lost 1,500 soldiers each day through October. So that's 40, over 46,000 soldiers were killed, Russian soldiers, and the war in Ukraine over October. War is always bad, isn't it? And there's always atrocities on both sides. And it's the innocent always that suffer most. Um, as I say, I'm just going to try and make you think, and you may not agree with things I say, but if it makes you think, that's good. One conflict that makes the world sit up and listen and take notice and worry is when Israel gets involved, isn't it? Now, I'm just going to read you from Zechariah. And just think about what's going on while I read this. Zechariah chapter 12. This was written 2,500 years ago, roughly. This is the word of the Lord concerning Israel. This is Israel, Judah and Jerusalem, okay? The Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth and who forms the spirit of man within him, declares... I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, 
I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. <coughs> all who try to move it will injure themselves. On that day, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watch full eye over the house of Judah, and I will build all, and I will blind all the horses of the nations. Then the leaders of Judah will say in their hearts, the people of Jerusalem are strong because the Lord Almighty is their God. On that day, I will make the leaders of Judah like a brazier in a woodpile, like a flaming torch among sheaves. They will consume right and left all the surrounding peoples, but Jerusalem will remain intact in her place. The Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first, so that the honour of the house of David and Jerusalem's inhabitants may not be greater than that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem, so that the feeblest among them will be like David, and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. On that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. <clears throat> um, seems there that anyone who's going to attack Israel or Jerusalem is going to come a cropper. Verse 3, it said, On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. You know, and we've seen that, haven't we? And in the last verse, On that day I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. Now I'm going to show you a map of Jerusalem. This is... Um, the Middle East, and you can see all the shaded countries there, uh, the Arab nations that are against Israel. And it looks a bit like a lion, that picture, doesn't it? <coughs> and then, like a restraining collar on that lion, there's a little area which is Jerusalem. Can you see that? It's a uh, rock and root. <coughs> That little bit there, that is Israel. And can I have a picture of England? And you see, there's England and there's Israel, the size of it. And uh, you can fit England into, uh, sorry, Israel into England six times. And you can fit uh, one of the nations which is against uh, Israel. If you can do that other picture, please, the uh, coloured one. No, not the coloured one. Yeah, that's it. All those nations <coughs> are against Israel. And just one of them, like Ir Iran, uh, which is the big mauve one over to the right, Uh, Israel is just over 8,000 square miles. Iran is just over 636,000 square miles. And that's just one country. On that, the MOV ones are actively hostile to Israel at the moment. Uh, the red ones, well, I think there's more actually because there's Lebanon, isn't there, as well? Yeah. Uh, the orange ones are hostile uh, and uh, there's a lot of them firing rockets against Israel. <coughs> the uh, Iranian chant, I don't know whether you saw it on the telly the other week, was death to Israel. And Hezbollah and Hamas uh, want to annihilate Israel, they say. Now, in Luke 21... Jesus showed that Jerusalem would be the central focus of the political and military upheavals that would immediately precede his return. Now another couple of things. Zechariah chapter 14 says this. 
then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations he, as he fights in the day of battle. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half of the mountain moving north and half south. Now, as I say, this was written two and a half thousand years ago, and um, I'd heard that there was a crack down the Mount of Olives. I didn't know how true that was, so I googled it. I said, is there a geological fault uh, through the Mount of Olives that it come back on Google? You can do it yourself. It says, yes, there is a geological crack, well, a geological fault line, straight through the Mount of Olives. And where does it run? It runs from east to west. And Jesus, when he returns, if there's a great earthquake, that will split into that mountain, half to the north and half to the south. Another indication of Jesus' second coming was that uh, man would be able to annihilate every living thing on the earth. In Matthew chapter 24, 21 and 22, it says, For there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Now, that was impossible to do up to around the 1960s to annihilate everyone in the world. It couldn't be done. But uh, then, for over 50 years now, man has been able to actually kill every living thing in the world. And you can see that it only takes, at the moment, you know, when you look around what's going on in the world, you can see it only would take one madman to press the button, wouldn't it, to set off a whole chain of events that could absolutely wipe out every living thing. You know, you think if uh, Putin gets upset that he's losing, you know, what will he do? And uh, it can be a terrible thing. You can see that it could trigger what the Bible says is Armageddon. Now, I don't know whether you know what Armageddon means, but it means hill of, uh, hill of Megiddo. And uh, do you know where that is? It's, it, well, it's in North Israel. It's in the north part of Israel. That's where Armageddon's going to be. And what is happening there at the moment? Because what is just above northern Israel is Lebanon, isn't it? And Lebanon and Israel are fighting there at the moment. Uh, I get stuff through from a guy called David Hathaway and he goes out to um, <coughs> Ukraine and other places uh, and holds uh, big services and prayer meetings and things. And uh, he, I got this the other day and uh, the final bit of it, he says, finally, as I write, I feel desperately in my spirit a call to prayer because of the coming months are going to see major unexpected upheavals in Britain, America, Europe and the Middle East. All this is in preparation for the return of Christ. And that was written uh, just before the American elections. And, uh, you know, you can see things. What I want you to do is just to think about things and, and look at things, you know, look at the, uh, what's going on in the world and read what the Bible says about what could happen. You know, and we were thinking in the first service that we, whatever happens, we can still have peace with God. You know, because we know our uh, future is safe with God. In Luke 21, it says, make your mind up beforehand not to worry. It does say not to worry about what you say, but, you know, make your mind up not to worry. God's in control of whatever happens. But I was thinking, you know, whether Jesus returns tomorrow or a thousand years' time, I don't know, and none of us know. But, you know, what it does make us do is just make sure we're prepared by looking at things. Look around and keep watch. And I was thinking, make sure we're not like the five foolish virgins that we read about in Matthew I was um, at a church two weeks ago. Uh, in, we went uh, on holiday a long way away. It was uh, near Pin Mill. 
And, uh, and we went to the church there, and uh, the vicar said that uh, she mentioned about end times, and she said she's glad she won't be around when it happens. So afterwards I said, how do you know you're not going to be around when it happens? Uh, but she didn't have time to talk to me, she said. So, <laughs> so, you know, maybe she knows something that I don't. But uh, we have no idea, obviously, when it will be. But I, I was just thinking about the five foolish virgins. They were all part of the chosen bridal party. But they fell asleep and their lamps went out. Um, a while ago I read that those lamps in those days needed attention about every 15 minutes, you know, and the oil speaks of in us the Holy Spirit. You know, we need attention, don't we, to make sure we're trimmed every 15 minutes or whatever, <laughs> uh, or every day, and we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need constant attention. Don't let us fall asleep uh, or the oil run out. Today is Remembrance Day. We need to remember every day, really, what Jesus has done for us. You know, once a year is no good. Once a week is no good. And uh, that's why communion is so important, you know. Communion, unless, lest we forget. And it's so easy to forget. We not only need to remember the past, but we need to remember the future. What is going to happen in the future, where are we going? When we're going through tough times, we need to remember the, the future. You know, when we're thinking, when we prepare for a holiday, you know, you do loads of preparation, don't you, for a holiday, for two weeks or whatever. I mean, we're already now preparing for a holiday to go skiing in February. And we, you know, thinking about it all the time, preparing for it, and it surprises me why people don't bother to think about eternity because that's longer than two weeks. You know? <laughs> but people don't bother to really think about it. They try and put it out of their mind and hope, oh, well, if I'm a good person, I'll be okay. The thing I read at the beginning about the grenade, you know, that person was mocked, ridiculed, and yet he dived on the grenade to save what he thought was his friends, you know, from being killed. Does that remind you of someone who's mocked and ridiculed today and yet he's the only one that was prepared to lay down his life for us? Don't miss out by listening to lies of, of people around us. One last thing, Andy Gels, I was speaking to him, he's a guy that spoke last week he, I was speaking over lunch and uh, he said to me that we were talking about Israel and uh, there was a qu someone asked a question why has Israel got such a formidable army for such a small country? And the answer was because every soldier is valued and is treated like a general. You know, those guys are willing to lay down their lives for what they believe in because they're valued and uh, treated well. And was, it just made me think, as a church, do we make everyone feel valued? You know, because we don't know what people are like until the chips are down. And are we willing to lay down our lives for uh, what we believe and also even just be nice to the people around us, you know, I'll be willing to do that. Don't miss out by listening to lies. So just keep a watch on things. You know, it may blow over. This has happened before these sort of things. But you never know. You know, it could be one day it will happen and Christ will return. Now I'm just going to play you a song so, and uh, this is for, uh, by Larry Norman, which is uh, from 1970s. Was filled with guns and war, and everyone got trapped. 
to buy a bag of gold I wish we'd all been ready There's no time to change your mind The sun has come and you've been left behind A man and wife asleep in bed She hears a noise and turns Standing still, I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come, and you've been left behind. Sees that I shake and stir. 
understood Can be conned and broken for my regard And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And through it all, through it all it is well in front